Kelsey Nicole Nelson back here with a face, a name we know very well in the DMV area. Aka Cake Maryland's own former champion boxer, Jared Hurd, along with his soon to be wife, Miss Ray Hurd. So appreciate y'all having us out today. I know Jared, something exciting is happening here yes. at the gym. So tell the listeners what they can expect from you and this new partnership that you formed. Well, of course, uh, many may not know, but my, my fiance's future wife is uh, Ethiopian yeah. and me visiting Ethiopia uh, back in 2021, I went to go see their beautiful country. Um, she she set up a press conference for me to donate and give back to the the fighters out there that uh, wanted uh, plenty of equipment, gear, fighting equipment, and um, I got a chance to meet Iyasu, who is the African um, Boston Federation president, yeah. and uh, we're trying to merge African Boston and American Boston together and form uh, some uh, beautiful and the star here in the DMV. That's very exciting. Now, let me ask you, are you aware of your own African roots? Or is this all new to you? First experience to Africa, first connection to Africa. How was that experience? I'm learning about it. It's uh, <laughs> still new to me, you know. Okay. Uh, but, um, you know, being over there in that country is very beautiful, um, um, very nice. And I uh, can't yeah. wait to go back to somewhere I love to visit and I uh, plan on visiting there soon. That's exciting. Now we're going to go over to you. Why was it so important for Jared to have that connection to your home of Ethiopia? And how do you hope that it helps to grow DMV boxing and African boxing together through this partnership? Okay, that's a wonderful question. Um, I felt as if, you know, we're becoming one. Right. So I wanted to take Jared back to my homeland and introduce him to a whole new world. You know, we, we get to travel all over the world. Like we go to like, you know, South America, Europe, right. but we're like, it's important that we go to Africa right. um, and then essentially get to know my heritage and my culture, but really connect to his African roots too, because mm -hmm. as African-Americans, we are essentially all from Africa. Right. Um, so that was a, a concept in it of itself. And then I also wanted him to explore and get to see different parts of the world on how they are in boxing. Right. And when he went, to Ethiopia and he got to see how um, different fighters from around the world from different uh, tribes in Ethiopia and he got to see how those fighters really came up and went through struggle and went through adversity but be able to compete and eventually I think um, Ethiopia is going to be trying out for the Olympics the boxing nice, Olympics exciting. yeah for the first time so he got to see a few of the fighters that were and training and he was able to donate equipment and I think that's very very beautiful which then led for him to um, at the time Iyasu was the president of the Ethiopian okay. Boxing Federation and then now he um, you know went to election and now became the president of the African Boxing right. Confederation so that one small meet and greet led to something big because now Iyasu being in the position that he is now he's like I want to be able to connect with uh, black and African and African American fighters all around the world mm -hmm. and he instantly remembered his connection that he had made with Jared and so he reached out to Jared and then he also Iyasu did some re research and figured out there's tons of talent here in the DMV yes. tons of talent plenty of fighters that grew up here in this area for um that are pro and amateur fighters. So he's hoping to connect with it and really start that bridge right here in DMV right. and essentially go out through the US and then around the world. Yeah, you know, I love you talked about that because I know you have amateur boxers that box yeah. here. We also know in the US there's an attack right now on diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? And yes. that there's African American history classes not being taught as much in schools. Yes. So you talk about the wanting connection to Africa. You yes. have young boxers here. Yes. Jared, how can you help these young boxers be educated on their African roots and what you're doing to hopefully see not only where they came from but where they can go with boxing oh yeah that's my point you know uh, my, my whole uh, uh, reason of getting into this because you know when I was coming up I didn't have someone in my position to come around and actually be here physically that you could touch and be hands-on right. with as a, a fighter so me being here to be in a position to allow uh, younger fighters coming up to just to see what it's like to to be a world champion and uh, uh, you know take over the, the Boston game. I just want to be actually here to be able to be there physically with the fighters. And uh, this is why Open Swift Nation Boston Gym invited Iyasu yeah. here, and um, we plan on you know just building from there. That's exciting. It looks amazing. I know you guys can't see everything. <laughs> what was the process of building this? You know, how can this be a, a beacon of hope for so many boxers in the community? Uh, well, the process was, you know, um, it was just uh, getting the gym in first in, 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 in place and, uh, you know, just getting fighters in here. Uh, right. Boston is a difficult sport to kind of explain 
how it's, it's one way of getting mm -hmm. to the top, but um, right. you know, uh, we, we're here to help and reach out to the, to the younger fighters and uh, get them to the position they need to be in. That's exciting. Talk about younger fighters, right? Yes, you talked a lot about unity and wanting, you know, this partnership with him as a new, newly elected African Confederation Boxing President to bring unity, not only in Africa with Arab speakers and English yes. speakers and French yes. speakers, but also with African Americans here. Mm -hmm. So talk about the unity that you're hoping to form, again, as more people learn, not just about Ethiopia, you know, what yes. they say on the news about yeah. Ethiopia, because I think I keep thinking about soccer and yeah. football, right? And that's like the first thing that most people talk about, but like uh -huh. that unity that boxing can bring, because so many boxing fans know when Muhammad Ali went, right? Yeah. We all remember that fight and what that yeah. meant. Mm -hmm. That was so long ago. There's some of our young people, right, that don't know about that. Yeah. So, you know, how are you hoping to grow maybe unity between African Americans, Africans, this gym, DMV boxing, and boxing as a whole? Okay, yeah, and it's great that you brought up the analogy to soccer because yeah. when we look at soccer, there are so many different international teams right. that come from all these different countries, and then we're able to go to um, like the World Cup right. or you know be able to go to all of these soccer tournaments and get to interact and and meet and pretty much get an inclusion of the culture. Um, in soccer. So we want to bring that similar concept into boxing. Here in the U.S., I feel like, as, as myself as an American as well, we pretty much only get to see boxing in one way. We don't get to really see the international impact that boxing has, but it really does. There are a lot of communities and there are a lot of young kids that look up to American fighters, European fighters, South American fighters, and say, I wanna be like this fighter one day. Right. But they really don't know how they're gonna be able to bridge that gap. Right. right now, there's a huge gap. We don't have that connection from the US here as uh, for American fighters to be able to even go to Africa right. and possibly fight and interact and get to know the background and the culture of how they fight and their techniques. Um, I know that Saudi Arabia is doing something similar right okay. now um, where there are professional fighters in the U.S. going out there and so they're able to soak up and learn that culture, learn up that tradition and fight against other Saudi Arabian fighters as well as other fighters from around the world. Yeah. So I feel like by us doing this now in Africa, it's going to open up the door for so many other fighters, not just in the U.S., but all over the world to be able yeah. to go to Africa and meet Americans, meet Europeans, meet South Americans, and, you know, be able to make their dreams come true. That's amazing. So biggest question, how are you guys able to plan all this in the midst of planning a wedding? That's incredible. <laughs> I'm like, impress them. I mean, I'm hearing all of these great things. Yeah, and you guys yeah. also have a big thing coming up yes, next month, right? Yes, we do. Yep, we're getting married next month. Um, but honestly, I feel as if, you know, we have been blessed enough by God. Right. And so when an opportunity comes like this and when Iyasu is like, hey, you know, I want to come to your community, reach out and meet other, other amateur boxers, right. we're like, we're going to put our, like, our really hectic schedule to the side and be able to come and bring this event together because this might be a once in a lifetime opportunity right. for some of these amateur fighters. I mean, when they were here earlier, just even interacting with Iyasu and the parents right. interacting with Iyasu, it lit up their, it really lit up yeah. their eyes and it made them smile and it was so happy to meet somebody who is so prominent right. in the boxing community right. to just come here to, you know, the small yeah. town in Maryland, right. essentially. At their fingertips. At their fingertips yeah. and connect with him and potentially set up for something greater for them in the future. That's amazing. And talking about blessings, last one at least before I let you guys go, you guys have been a blessing to others. I understand this equipment behind me is just yes. a small piece of what's going to be donated to the Gambu tribe yes. in Africa. So let's yes. talk about that, why that's so important, because already you can see that this is going to help real boxing. Yes. Because, you know, a large yeah. reason why sports aren't played in a, you know, a lot of countries is money, right? It costs yes. to get equipment. Boxing, yes. I'm sure, Jared, is not cheap, right? right. There's a lot yes. that you probably need to do, but, you know, it shouldn't be a barrier, right? To talk about what you hope this does and talk about what the Gambu tribe is for those that don't know. Okay, yes. So, Iyasu is originally from the Gamo tribe okay. in Ethiopia. Um, we actually were able to go visit the nice. area. It's called Arba Minch. And Iyasu actually has a, a like a hotel resort in that yeah. area. And he invited us to come out there for the weekend. And it is so beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> One of the most beautiful places <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Like, you can actually have a fruit farm nice. where you're okay. able to eat like natural and organic fruit. Nice. Um, with actual seeds in their watermelon. <laughs> Makes a difference. Yes, yes, it made a huge difference. And we got to interact with the tribes out there. So Adaba Minch essentially means 40 streams of water. Okay. They have a natural spring water that they have accessible to the tribe out there. Um, they said it's one of the most 
uh, like high mineral waters in the world. Okay. Um, so if you go out there, you get to see everybody. Their skin is so clear. They just look so healthy. And whatever. <laughs> I'm like, I want to take some of this water back. <laughs> but um, we, most importantly, we got to interact with the people in the town and, and in the village. So we went into the village and we got to meet some of the people in Avamij and we okay. fell in love. Um, we met a few local um, athletes there. We met a boxer out there as well. And so we really got to see the struggles that they have out there and not being able to right. get equipment accessibly like us, we can go on Amazon and right. essentially order these products. Yeah. They can't, right. you know, they have to wait till somebody potentially donate something and then hand it over to somebody and right. then it, it might have so many wears and tears before it gets into their hand because right. they're essentially outside the city. So with what all Iyasu is doing and we really support his vision, we wanted to donate boxing That's equipment amazing. to the Ga yeah. to the Gamo tribe and essentially support future up and coming boxers. That is so exciting. Do we know when the donations are happening, when look at the equipment? So we're tr so I know Iyasu is going to be here for um, is about a week or so longer. Okay. Yeah. So in that time we're trying to get it all set okay. with him before he goes back to Ethiopia. That is so exciting. Is there any got, other people can help? Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, I wanted to say I got plenty of gear for you guys. And, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a lot. That's exciting. Well, once again, thank you guys so much. We love what you're doing. Thank you for having us here. Jeremy, people can come, but if they can, they need to come check out Swift Nation Boxing. Yeah. It's truly incredible in what you're doing. Thank you so much for both of your times. Thanks oh, again thank so much for tuning in. Thank you.